Howdy. So I wanted to do a uh, little video here. This is the uh, Hack RF one, and uh, I got this kit, and it's uh, basically what it is is the uh, optional shield and some other parts that uh, go on around the front end of the uh, Heck RF-1. So there's the uh, frame of the shield here and that's the top, the cap. And uh, if you see the dashed line, that's the the pads that this frame solders down to. But I wanted to try and, and figure out if this shield is effective, you know, if, how much does it help? And so I was trying to think of a way to quantify that. And um, about the only thing I could come up with is put some RF in the air and, and try to measure um, the difference before and after. So this is before. I got the Hack RF running at uh, 446 megahertz. And uh, here's a uh, signal generator. And basically I'm throwing out a, a carrier uh, at 446 megahertz at zero dBm. So um, I just have this small antenna right here connected up to it and uh, that's the, actually the antenna that came with the the Heck RF. So I have that and then I'm also running um, my spectrum analyzer with a small, uh, it's actually an old VHF antenna but as long as I keep using the same antenna you know, that should be fine. So I got just an antenna on it and uh, it's hooked up to this display here. Um, so you can see it a little easier. And uh, if you look here, marker one it shows a uh, peak right now um, on the spec an of negative uh, 47 dB right there. And uh, here is the uh, Hack RF. Uh, with SDR sharp I'm running it this computer that I'm running it on right now is actually a little slow so I'm only running eight mega samples per second and I have it zoomed in so that we can see uh, what's going on there now let me show you uh, the gain settings I have let's choose a gain so I have uh, the VGA gain set to 26 dB and the LNA gain set to zero and right now I'm getting about 30, negative 32 dB, dBm uh, measured out of that. Uh, I'm going to turn this down a little. Wherever I decide to keep it is where I'll leave it set. So there it is, uh, right at negative 45. So I'm going to leave the VGA gain at 12 dB and LNA gain at 0 dB. And um, that won't change. So there we go. There's the carrier. Negative 45 dB. And uh, let's see. I can switch this carrier off here. RF off. There it goes away there. And uh, it dropped out right there. And then, uh, so we'll switch back on. And uh, just so you can see that that is that carrier. It's a little late latency there. Um, but it's probably the computer more than anything. So that is uh, our before setting. And um, you can see I have terminations on all the SMAs, the 50 ohm terminations. These are just the clock input and output. But I terminated them anyway. I leave those on there to protect and then I got this terminated with the 50 ohm terminator. And uh, so that's the front end of the board right there. And uh, you can see the, in the top right corner is the, uh, the max chip. That is the uh, ADC DAC chip right here in the top corner. Um, and uh, the rest I think is uh, 
I think that's the uh, probably the mixer, the other chip there. And here, right in there, you can see uh, the trace for the antenna connector sneaking through there. And um, let's see if we look here. There, that pin header is actually where you can uh, directly access the uh, the ADC DAC chip, and um, you can actually see the traces coming in and out, back and forth to that and all the RF path traces there. So now I'm gonna install this. Um, I'm gonna move it, I gotta, I gotta clean this other project up a little bit here and uh, move some of this crap off of my bench and uh, set up, set this thing up in my, uh, my little vise, electronics vise and get ready to solder it. So anyway, the kit also comes with this um, headers for that Bank 2 auxiliary pinout. I'm not sure exactly what's available on that. I, I didn't realize that this came with it, but it does. So uh, anyway, there we go. Here's your before, and I'm reading uh, just for consistency. Getting a negative 43, negative 44, depends on uh, whether or not my hand's in front of this antenna. Um, and then uh, this is set to 0, 0.0 dBm. And uh, up here we're reading right at negative 45 dB. So I'm going to stop all this and then clean up and go set up and get ready to solder that frame of that this frame here onto the uh, hacker F board and then I'll be snapping the cover on there and we'll have a uh, RF shield over the front end on this thing let's see how well it works all right we're set up on the bench here and uh, just kind of test fitting this thing looking at the uh, frame um, Got a uh, wrist strap and an anti-static mat, 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 and all that good stuff. And uh, so I was noticing a few things about this. Um, the first thing is, how are you gonna solder this side with this pin header here? I'm not gonna attempt to take this out to get in there. So I think I'm gonna have to try to get to it from the inside of the of the frame. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I've never done one of these before, so uh, I'm just like you. I'm guessing the people watching this video are thinking about doing this themselves and they want to know how it's going to go. So, the other thing is, there's a little bit of wiggle room in between the pads and the frame, you know, you could kind of slide around a little bit. But you need to be careful on the side with that pin header again, because you need room to, uh, be able to uh, snap this on. So that takes a little bit of space and uh, if you look closely it has these little uh, dimples that snap into uh, little holes in the, in the side of the frame which you can see in that shot there. So um, yeah that's gonna need room to, uh, to get on over there and clear it so, uh, I don't know. Just keep that in mind. Um, so I'm going to use uh, a little bit of flux from this flux pin on these pads to help the solder flow. Um, my solder that I'm using is a uh, nice thin uh, Kester solder, real thin stuff here. Going to use some of this. I have a uh, this Weller solder station and I'm gonna set that to about 600 degrees um, should be good to get the job done quick so if you don't have a lot of experience soldering um, good tools is very important 
I'm gonna start out using uh, this big wedge tip here just so that I can get the heat in there quick and, and get it stuck in there quick. And uh, another important part of soldering is keeping your tip clean. So uh, there's tip tenner here. If it gets all gooey, you can just clean it up and a uh, little wet sponge to clean off the debris. I'll move this whole thing closer to me when I get ready to do it. And uh, keep your sponge wet. Keep the uh, iron hot and uh, see what happens. Hopefully everything goes well. I'm going to switch over to the other camera now and put my wrist strap on and uh, try to get to it. That actually went really well, I think. Um, my camera can focus on this. I think I got it pretty well soldered in place. on there. So
So now nothing to do but uh, snap the cover on and uh, go test it out. There we go. There's the uh, Hack RF1 with the optional RF shield installed. Actually, not so bad. Let's go test it out. Alright, well, I got some news for you. Number one, I didn't smoke it. It still works. So here we are, uh, tuned to the same frequency. And uh, you can see the uh, gain is set the same. 0 LNA, 12 VGA. Let me close this and check it out. No carrier. It works great, apparently. Uh, same setup here, 0 dBm, 446 MHz. And same setup here, still right around negative 44 uh, on the spec end with the uh, antenna. So the RF is still there. And uh, look how quiet it is. Not even a trace. Let's jack up the, uh, see how much we can, I think this thing goes to uh, positive, I think it's right around 16. Let's go down to 14. Now we got something. The tuner still works. But even at, uh, it took that much more. Um, so 15 dB more signal at least here on this. Uh, we're up to negative 28 now on a spec in. And uh, we were at, uh, I think, negative 43 or so. Um, and that just gives us a hint of a signal there. You can see right there. Um, so uh, that is effective. It's blocking the uh, RF out of the front end. So I'd say that's definitely worth it, you know. Without a doubt, I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, pretty cool. So I'm excited about using it now. I wonder, you know, how much that's going to affect the dryer's ready. Clothes are done. I wonder how much that's going to affect the uh, day-to-day usage, but um, hey, right here we see that thing works. Um, I think that kit was 15 bucks or maybe $20, and uh, it wasn't that hard to put in. You know, I was a little nervous about it, but uh, hey, it's on there. Works, and um, I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, go for it. You should do it too. Piece of cake. Uh, all right, well, my name is Cameron, and uh, my call sign is AJ4TW, and uh, we'll hope to see you next time. Um, next time we'll, uh, we'll do some more uh, RF play with this thing maybe and uh, see if we can learn a new trick. But uh, there you go for now. There we are. Hack RF1 with the optional heat shield installed. This thing's putting out plus 14 and uh, barely a hint there where before we had uh, I don't know, I think it was uh, negative 43. It was set about the same as the uh, as what we saw with the antenna on the spectrum analyzer. So, same gain, everything. It knocked it out. So let's see. We were at zero, so that's plus 14.3 dBm signal to get that little ghost in there. So at least knocked out a very near field signal by, uh, by about 15 dB. So, uh, there we go. Catch you later.